Okay, so how do you go from that to, to writing? Where's the jump? I'm missing the disconnect. Or it's um, disconnected. Uh, I had, uh, I was so bored while I was there. It was awful. And, and I, I always liked writing. Yeah. When I was always writing, I guess since, you know, in school and uh, just started, even while I was working there, started writing again. Did, uh, tried to get on Sesame Street. What? was in New York. Yeah. Really wanted to write for Sesame Street. They just had like an open audition? For writers or no, open submission no, for writers? No, it was really hard and I didn't get on. Oh. <laughs> but they, you knew they were kept, hiring? No, no. Oh. I was like, I was like knocking on the door of Sesame Street. Wow. Here's my sketches. You know, this, I wrote this for Grover. <laughs> A lot of people don't know Sesame Street actually is just down in Tribeca. You can just go down there. You can just, yeah. <laughs> Take a left off house and it's, it's right there. It's hard to get to. Yeah, you're easily <laughs> lost. Wow, that's aggressive of you. <laughs> that doesn't seem like you up until this point at all to be that forward with something. Um, yeah, it was aggressive. I think that's I great. really annoyed them and did not get it. Um, <laughs> you got to do that though. But I, you know, I just kept writing sketches and uh, writing um, sitcoms, especially. just for yourself. Yeah. So where do, where do you finally get paid or get a job in the industry? Um, I hooked up with another guy. Uh, and we wrote some stuff together um, because at the time, and maybe still a little today, but definitely at the time, it was a lot easier to break in as a team. Yeah, I think it still really, is. You think so? Yeah, I just had Craig Gerard on. He broke in as a team. I've had a few people recently that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because they pay you half. They pay you half. <laughs> they got more voices in the room, yeah. And with these, like, yeah, really small staffs today, I'll bet, I'll bet teams. I'll bet that works. Um. So, what was his name? Where did you meet? Who, where did you meet the writer at? Oh, um, this is a uh, a guy my sister introduced me to. She went to college with him. And he okay, was interested in writing, and so we wrote together for a while. And then it did, wasn't really working out, but um, some of the stuff we did was good. Yeah, and uh, um, it got us a job on uh, Clarissa Explains It All. That was my first show. That's so amazing. We wrote there together, and then. You know, like I said, it wasn't really working out. How do you, um, sorry, how do you get that job, though? How, like, you're writing this stuff. How do you get it in the hands of, of that staff or whatever? Uh, we started just sending it to, to everywhere. And he had a friend on In Living Color, and In Living Color started to have some interest. And we never got that job. But based on that, we got an agent, William Morris. And what? And the William Morris agent got us... Uh, um, Clarissa explains it all. Wait, okay. For people that don't know, obviously William Morris became William Morris Endeavor. It's one yeah. of the biggest agencies. They don't return phone calls to anybody. So how, without selling anything, how did you get an agent there? Well, they, uh, I don't know. They were <laughs> interested. <laughs> this, I guess this was a long time ago. So yeah. maybe they were still growing so, you know, at that point. Um, uh, I think, you know, back in the day when there was a lot fewer um, networks and shows, they would, they would show up. Um, like, so they had people covering in living color and then those agents would show up. That's cool. They'd go to tape night and they'd keep talking to all their writers. And sure. They would know what's going on and who might get hired. And, um, so they were, they Scouting. were, yeah, that's interesting. I feel like that doesn't happen anymore. As you alluded I to. I think they don't really do that. There's, it's just spread too thin. I've had a lot of writers on too recently that don't have representation. They write for legit shows and they don't even have representation because that's cool. <laughs> you you like that? I do, although I don't know how they're going to get kind of their next job. Well, I think it goes to networking. Like you said, you know somebody that works on a show, and then they pass your stuff around type of yeah, stuff. Yeah, I mean, most of the time you're getting your own jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Especially in writing, it seems like. Yeah. But you said they got you but closer explains it all because they – Oh, yeah. I they just no submitted it. Yeah. <laughs> so how did that go? How many – did you guys ever – Write an episode of that, or were yeah, you just in the wrote, room? Yeah, we wrote one episode together. That's amazing. Yeah. I had no idea that... Is that even on your IMDb? Oh, it is on your IMDb. That's hilarious. What a, what a way Did to break in. Did you watch that as a kid? I watched some of it. Not, not as religiously not as... Not every episode? No. In that, in that era, I was on the, the full house tip. Ah. <laughs> Same age as Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen. I was convinced we were going to get married. <laughs> but to both of them. <laughs> oh, wow. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> Okay, so you, so you get in a room. What's that like? Is that is that really exciting for you? Uh, nerve wracking? How? It, yes, exciting, nerve wracking. Right. But it wasn't really a room in a traditional sense. I think there were three of us. Oh, four, four. Wow. So did you get in on the first season then? 
second season. Oh, wow. So somebody left. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a tiny room. Yeah, it's a tiny room. That doesn't happen, I feel like. Yeah. Anyway. There was a, a feeling over there that you didn't really have to be original because the kids were watching it for the first time. Oh. So it was new to them. Interesting. Yeah. So that's why there, that was the reasoning for having a smaller room? Uh, I don't think that was the reasoning. <laughs> but I think it might have been part of it that you could just, well, you know, we don't have to work that hard for an original story. What, did that pay well? Compared to guild, like your, it was a guild show. Okay. So compared to your auditing, it was pretty great, probably. Oh, it was insane. <laughs> in fact, I have never felt richer in my whole life than I went f- when I went from, you know, basically nothing or a regular salary to the Writers Guild minimum. That's amazing. Because Writers Guild minimum uh, is set for like a grown up to kind of support his family. <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, not be rich, but. But support family. But when you're just like a twenty something, you know, that's just like holy crap. Yeah. These checks are huge. <laughs> Although New York is was it expensive back then too? Or not uh, as much, obviously. <clears throat> uh I moved out here and then got the job. Oh, you uh, got Clues that explains it all in LA. I was in LA. Oh. We got the job. It took us back to New York to write it. And I forget where I was living. When I did that. And then we went to Orlando to shoot it. Wow. And we were down there. Okay, so wait, sorry. We what was the impetus to move from New York to LA? When you started writing with this partner, yeah, you guys just, just like, were like, hey, let's go to let's, LA. We gotta, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. I like that. You're like, really screw the finance jobs. I'm going for it. <laughs> yeah, in hindsight there was no there was no reason you had to be in LA. <laughs> <laughs> clearly. I guess it feels like, you know, like an actor going to make their dreams. <laughs> Clearly, an actor needs to be here to do the audition. Had you had you been to LA previously before that? Um, I think so. Yeah, to visit. Okay. So, did you drive out here when you guys moved out here, or did you fly? No, I flew. Oh, flew. nice. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I didn't have a car. So. Where did you Where did you move to when you first came here? What neighborhood was hot in the early nineties? I lived on Hollywood Boulevard. Oh my! Yeah. Very pretty woman of you. No. <laughs> Doesn't she live on Hollywood Boulevard? I think she does. Oh, I don't know. No, I lived on like Curson in Hollywood. Okay. It was, or near Stanley or something. That's amazing. It was, uh, yeah, more <laughs> residential. Not live on the uh, the part where they they dress in costumes. What, what what's that like moving to L.A. in the early '90s, living on Hollywood Boulevard? Is it like romanticized? I don't know. How how would you? Ex- it was weird because I came and had nothing to do and didn't know a lot of people. I, I had a friend who lived uh, on Hollywood Boulevard a block away, and I stayed with him until like I stayed a little too long, and he like came back from a run with a sign that said "for rent." That's <laughs> and hilarious. And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll go." To- <laughs> I was looking. That is hilarious. Yeah, and just uh, got a place a block away. Okay, so it wasn't like really cool or hip. It- because I feel like if you tell somebody in the Midwest you move into L.A. and move, living on Hollywood Boulevard, we obviously know that that's not the dream, but it sounds like it is. Right. And maybe back then, I don't know. Uh, no, no. It, at no point felt like, oh, I am living the dream. <laughs> Until you got clues who explains it all. Yeah. Like guild money. Yeah. <laughs> so how long since you moved to L.A. and then you got clues to how, mo- how much longer after that? How long were you in L.A. before you landed that? Um, I don't know. Six Just, months. Oh, that's pretty quick. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you told a kid from Connecticut now and you moved to LA, you'd get a job in six months, that'd be pretty good, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it would be great. <laughs> I've been here five years. I'm I still mean, yeah, waiting for a job. <laughs> no, me too. I, if I, that's if great. I'd be working in six months. That'd be cool. Okay. So you, you go to New York, you write that, then you shoot it in Orlando. Do you, are you with the show until it's canceled or? No, 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 no. We, we split up as a team and, and lost our job. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. That's controversial. Yeah. That makes you feel expendable a little bit probably, <laughs> right? We were so expendable. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. But no, well, it was, turned out okay. Okay. So what's your next thing? How do you, how do you rebound? Then it took for a while and I went a, a while without working, um, just kept writing spec script after spec script, um, probably 10 of them. 
and uh it was a lander larry sanders show that i did that finally got me probably all my next jobs i got weird science the series that's great yeah which was fun that's awesome and then a fox show after that which uh it's the Lisa Ann Walter show. Okay. <laughs> I don't really know what it was called. Um, I think it had The Naked Truth? No, it was before that. It's not on here. Yeah, I don't think it was on here. <laughs> so the story of this, this show was Fox had this pilot they did with Lisa Ann Walters. And uh, it didn't come out very well. And everybody hated it. Yeah. And the creators didn't like it. And the studio didn't like it. And the network didn't like it. But, you know, they test all their pilots. And yeah. it's their highest testing pilot. Oh, hilarious. So they're like, all right, I guess we got to pick this one up, which they did for six episodes. And then, like, um, with six episodes, it had six different showrunners. <laughs> oh, man. And they used the money for the last episode to shoot a pilot for something else that's crazy time <laughs> nobody liked it at any point oh it was a real disaster what do you learn from something like that you got that's got to be a big learning moment i feel like um probably learned a lot but that was one of my first like real big rooms right like first real writer's room yeah despite the dysfunction or in light of the dysfunction i guess <laughs> yeah i wasn't there for even the whole run of it um I'm not sure I learned anything. <laughs> well, they go through six showrunners. That's, I, here's that's what, here's what I remember. They, uh, I, I called something um, sitcom I said, we shouldn't do that. It's kind of sitcom And then I got pulled aside later and said, you can't say something sitcom Oh, wow. That's <laughs> yeah. something to learn. <laughs> yeah. So, from when, you, from when you got fired from, uh, sorry to be so blunt, from Clarissa Explains It All, and yeah. then you were getting these other shows. Was Did your agent with William Morris stick with you? Were they still submitting you to things, or did they leave when you lost Cl Clarissa? Um, they stayed with me, but they weren't doing much. Okay, and so these other were. shows you got yourself. Weird science. Yeah. That's, that's yes, great. I got that myself. Also sucks. You paid them, but it's great that... It's okay. <laughs> How do you get uh, hooked up with uh, Mike Judge then for King of the Hill? Because that was probably your biggest thing outside yeah, of the office, that, right? Yeah. That really and that was a happened. fantastic show. Yeah. Well, Greg Daniels uh, hired me. Okay. Um, yeah. Greg is my brother-in-law. So. He was at the time? Yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, so he was well aware of my writing and hired me. And like, that was awesome. That's super Great. cool. Yeah. You were there from season one? Yes, okay. first five, first five seasons, hundred hundred episodes. Let me ask you an awkward question. Okay, <laughs> it's probably not awkward, but I like to preface it. Does is that awkward when you're in the writers' room where where they're like, was Greg Daniels the e executive producer? Yeah, is that awkward when you're like, yeah, I, I knew the boss type of thing, or did everyone just immediately respect you? Is that a weird question? Uh, no, it probably was pretty awkward. And I think it was awkward for Greg and me. And uh, no, I don't think anybody. I think the culture of that show was <laughs> was really kind of odd, and nobody like respected anybody without having earned it. Sure. So I had to kind of earn it. Yeah. But you know, after a while, all that stuff falls away. Yeah, of course. But I I, I just ask because I feel like. Everyone has their resentments towards nepotism, I feel like. But then at the same time, yeah. they would do it. They would be the first ones to do it themselves. So it's a weird. Well, you know, yeah. And I was, was very, like, slightly embarrassed by that. Um, but I don't think, uh, you know, I don't know. I think I've pulled my weight. Yeah, you, it seems like it. Yeah. you. Yeah. I would assume you would have gotten fired right away if you were just <laughs> smooching off yeah. of Greg. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. To how many... Uh, did you direct any of those or did, when did you start directing? Um, was it the office or yeah, it was the office? Okay. Cause it would be probably hard for you to direct a animation. You know, it was weird. Um, so animation has a director, but the director right. is an animator. Right. Um, that's the person who gets the credit. So, so there's like, there's a couple of phases and one is directing the actors while they're recording their lines. Right. Which I never did. 
Um, and then there's uh, kind of supervising the the storyboards and doing all that stuff, which is a lot like directing and show running almost a little bit. Too. Yeah, and that I did, and that was uh, that was great. That was very informative and interesting to to um, think about for the first time framing a shot. Right. How many how many times did you do that on King of the Hill? Well, for every episode that I wrote. Oh, I wrote oh, that's 50. cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a big help then. Was directing and show running something you always wanted to do? Or was that just something well, that yeah, you felt Well, yeah, everybody, think, you know, that's the, that's the road. So without even thinking about it or knowing what it's going to be like, every writer's, you know, on staff is like, okay, here's the, the, the six stages to becoming a showrunner, you know. Right. Um, the, those different levels, and then that's your that's the goal. But uh, I kind of feel like you know head writer is maybe the most fun part of being a writer. Why do you say that? Because there's so much management in show running, and you don't really get to to write as much as you want. To yeah. Enjoy. Because it's all the extra organization of schedules and things. It's, and it's so much. You're in charge of so much. Yeah. Um. But, but because of that, you're out of the room so much, and there's a head writer who's. I mean, everybody runs their show a little bit differently, but most of the ones I've been on, you know, the there's that head writer who sits at the table all the time and is in charge of, you know, maybe not the overall story, but the execution. Yeah, and that's really fun. Sure. See, I feel like a lot of people wouldn't want to direct, though. Like I, I. Part of me does, but I don't know. I feel like there's just so much pressure on the director and everyone's looking to you and a lot of people just want to write. Yeah, it's awesome. There's a lot of things that <laughs> feel like they're promotions that aren't promotions. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, of course I want to direct. But but yeah, if you just like to write, just write. Yeah. But you inspired to direct. I did start to really like it. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, you just like to see your vision yeah. come to the paper. Yeah. That's cool. 